Epilogue Perhaps the clearest area of success in the modern pulpit is in the preaching of psychology. Indeed, it can be said that psychology has in the main replaced theology and the social gospel in most pulpits. Today, man is more interested in himself than in God or society. Psychology was once a branch of theology, as was anthropology. With the rise of humanism, psychology began to develop new orientations. In the 19th century, with Wilhelm Wundt, who was the son of a Lutheran pastor, psychology became the science of experience. Evangelical pietism and scientific experimentalism came together to exalt experience as the new area of reality and truth. The exaltation of experience meant that life now meant experience in its truest, fullest sense. The meaning of life was sought in experience, not in God's inscriptured word. Experience became the new means of revelation. To cultivate experience means to cultivate also sensitivity to experience. Self-pity, endless and maudlin introspection and a lust for fiction and theatre fare dealing with experience, the more intense and violent the better, came into respectability and prestige. A reviewer of a particularly immoral film, strongly larded with sex and violence, praised it highly by calling it an intense theatre experience. Every bar today has a generous helping of drinkers who are sensitive souls. Whores have a humanistic dignity as persons of experience and purveyors thereof, and their clients are also sensitive souls who go to them for therapeutic purposes, we are told. It should be clear by now that this study regards psychology as a theological, not a scientific or a humanistic concern. Moreover, the popular psychology of our time has no rightful place in the church in that it is implicitly anti-theological and man-centred rather than God-centred. For pastors to borrow from contemporary humanistic psychologies means to introduce an alien doctrine of salvation to their congregations. Sigmund Freud sought self-consciously to undermine religion by substituting the psychiatrist, psychoanalyst or psychologist for the pastor and priest. Implicit or explicit in any and all psychologies is a doctrine of salvation which is radically at odds with biblical faith. If the Bible is right, mental health is a product of justification of the atonement effected by Jesus Christ, applied and developed in the life of man, this means sanctification and the rule of faith is clearly the law. Man cannot find mental health apart from faith and obedience. To assume that mental health is possible on any other grounds is to deny that the fall of man was occasioned by sin. It is to deny, moreover, that the sovereign and sole remedy for the fall is the atoning, regenerating and sanctifying work and power of God the Son and of God the Spirit in terms of the calling of God the Father. Humanistic psychologies are aspects of the revolt against maturity. Not surprisingly, they interpret man not in terms of the doctrine of mature creation, but in terms of the essential infantilism of man, and they in part remake man in terms of their false image of him. The consequence of this disastrous course is not mental health, but the aggravation of man's fall and the developments of his depravity to further degrees. A Christian psychology must thus be theological and systematically biblical, or else it will be a facet of man's revolt against maturity. This has been a Chalcedon Foundation production, produced by Grace Community School and Nicene Covenant Church, published by Ross House Books. Copyright 1977-1987, Mark R. Rushduni.
If you enjoyed this audiobook, be sure to visit calcedon.edu for more books and audiobooks by R.J. Rushtoni.